football fans, we're coming up on the last week of regular season here. Uh, Coach Cordy goes by in a hurry, doesn't it? Sure, sure <laughs> See, does. Flies by. So uh, we will uh, be down at Callaway County this week, and uh, we appreciate you being here on the show with us, uh, presented by Whitetail Properties, the Mark Williams Land Team, and in cooperation with First United Bank, Hodges Sports and Apparel, Sea Plant Federal Credit Union, Riley Tool and Machine, that's our buddy Todd Riley, voice of the Rockets, USA Mortgage, Derek Myers, he's the boom guy at the football games, the Heritage at Marion Golf and Pool, uh, Colonel Ag, Deer Lakes Golf Course, KB Pharmacy, Johnson's Furniture and Appliance, we have their mug here, uh, YTG Insurance, Tanner Taylor Agent, Frazier Law Firm, Bart Frazier, Jonathan James, and Wes Hunt. Full Body Fitness Studio, Serena Dickerson. She's the personal trainer. She's also the Booster Club president. Livingston Hospital, a Deaconess affiliate. H&H &H Home and Hardware, Farmers Bank and Trust, and Par for Plastics. Coach, uh, non-district game. And uh, by the way, we don't have any other guests here. Uh, volleyball so, trumped us. You know, you, yeah. get, you, get, you get a chance to be on the show and you go to the volleyball game. Yeah. That doesn't speak too well for us, does it, Coach? <laughs> no, I'm glad they're uh, supporting those girls. They were torn about it, but uh, I'm glad they're going to support those girls. they got a big game. Yeah, Lady Rockets are in the uh, semifinals as we're uh, uh, shooting the show here tonight uh, on Wednesday. We, we tape it on Wednesday. You get it on Thursday. But, yeah, I uh, hope they've done well. Uh, it'll be after the fact before this comes out, but they're playing Christian County. and uh, Big game. Yeah, big it game. is. Good luck Big to game. Them. And uh, proud of those Lady Rockets. Yeah, they've good done, team. done a great job. So uh, your Rockets will be down at Callaway County, a uh, team we haven't played too often. We scrimmaged them uh, some other times. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're pretty familiar with them. You know, uh, uh, the, this non-district game, a uh, district uh, – Pairings are already set, so next week, Critton County will host uh, Todd County Central here in the 2A playoffs, and uh, Mayfield will host Edmondson County, Caldwell will be at Ocath, and Murray at Fort Campbell to round out the first region, Class 2A. Uh, Lakers are 2-7, and seven, and uh, they have two, win two wins, if they're 2-7, and seven, obviously they have two wins. Uh, Fulton County and Marshall County are the two victories, and of their six of their seven losses, uh, six of them have been against teams with winning records. So, pr pretty tough schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 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 the only loss to a losing team was forty-three to nothing district game against Hopkinsville. Uh, Hopkinsville's one and eight. And the yeah. only game they've won is Callaway. Yeah, uh, you know it's uh, highly unusual for mm -hmm. for Hop Town. Uh, and uh, Callaway's, uh, you know, a decent four A team. That's a tough district. Of course, they're not going to. Uh, they have six. Six teams in their district, right. so they're this is it for them. This mm -hmm. is their last game, right? You know, you're, you're going in, into their place, uh, they're trying to salvage a little something mm -hmm. out of their season, they're at home, right? Uh, they'd like to go away with wins, so yeah, absolutely. They got a them. lot to play for, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can't take them for granted. And they're not a bad football team, like you pretty well pointed out there. Tough for a district, extremely tough. And with six teams in that district, that you know, most of your schedule is those district teams, mm -hmm. and really good, even the ones like Hop Town. I, I felt like they really. Figured it out towards late, had some stumbles throughout the year, um, but really turned it on there late. So, yeah, scary uh, football team. I think they're really well coached. I think a lot of their coaches is a good dude, and um, uh, several of their coaches. Uh, I think they do a really good job. Um, got some really nice players, like you said, the seniors. This will be the last one they'll ever play, you know, at least in the Laker sure. uniform. So, you know what that uh, means to those guys and, and what they're gonna, how they're going to come out and play. You know, it's going to be with everything they got. Yeah, you know uh, – of course, Crittenden County. We've had a good season. We're, we're five and four. You know, you'd like to like to win them all, but mm -hmm. uh, considering this is our first year up in two A and played it, probably the toughest schedule ever on the books mm -hmm. for Crittenden County High School. And to be f five and four and ranked number nine uh, in in two A right now uh, with one game to play is a, a testimony to to the to the, I think the hard work and the coaching staff for for this team this year. Uh, so you know what's what's odd to me, <laughs> Gage is. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we were number eight a week ago, and we've dropped now to number nine <laughs> yeah. and, and beat Caldwell, and, and Murray has now jumped ahead of us, and they're number seven. Yeah. 
Yeah. They played Mayfield tight. Maybe that's what they're looking at. I don't know what goes into those. Right. They played them tight for a while. Yeah, let me for, say. Yeah. For three quarters, I think the game was uh, within two scores going into the fourth quarter. So maybe that's what they're looking at. I don't know. I don't get too caught up. RPI is really the only one that holds any weight, and it doesn't until later on. So, yeah. you know, it's nice to be on those things, though, especially your first year in 2A. And we know we heard a lot of negative things in the beginning and how yeah. tough things were. So it's good to, you know, to show like, listen, we can compete. Just see it on paper. I think our guys know that, and I think you know for the most part the community does. But to see it right there on paper, like look, we're a top ten, two A team. So that's nice. I think for the guys to see. So. Yeah, you know, perennial top ten team in Class A, and then and then we went up to two A back a few a few years ago, and man, we we just had we struggled two right. A at that point. Two uh-huh. A uh, two A first region was pretty doggone tough back then too. You know, you had. Caldwell, Mayfield, Murray had some of their better teams too. Caldwell had the best teams they maybe had in history. Right. So yeah, uh, but now uh, you know making some waves uh, across the state. And this poll, you know, they don't do the Associated Press poll anymore, mm-hmm. which was always the one that I put probably more more credence on. Right. You know, it, I, it was a highly credible. It's done by a group of sports writers mm-hmm. and media people across the state, but uh, they they quit doing it. And so the the Courier Journal's That's picked the one this up, Jason Frey. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, he he's using a lot of the same people. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I talked to some of those guys up there uh, a couple of weeks ago about that, and uh, you know, we we could be involved in that if we wanted to uh, here and get a vote. But mm-hmm. uh, and I tell you, it's a lot of work when you start having to keep up, and not right. just your not just your class. Yeah. You gotta, you're gonna vote. You vote for them all. Right. You know. Yeah. And I mean, the basketballs of state. Well, you know. Yeah. It, right. It's kind of tough. So a lot a lot of time and energy, and uh-huh. I appreciate those guys that, that take time to do that. So uh, Callaway County is a team, like we said, we're four and six overall against them. You know when we. When uh, Crittenden, uh, or Callaway, I think the first year they had football was 1979, I believe. Okay. Andy Hunt had some stuff on the, on this week about Callaway. And, uh, you know, I covered Callaway back in 1982, 83, 84, 85, when I was at the Murray newspaper mm-hmm. back then. Had some decent teams, and Crittenden was in the district with them in the beginning. Crittenden right. was 3A back then. I, I never knew we were 3A ever. Yeah, Crittenden okay. was 3A uh, wow. back, back in, in uh, play. You know, Lone Oak was 3A, Crittenden, Callaway. Hmm. Lake Union uh, was actually in there, too. Uh, yeah, the first first football game I ever covered in the state of Kentucky, I got on a, I got on the school bus. I rode the bus with them uh-huh. with Callaway County. Sam Hart was the head coach. Sam okay. Hart won several state championships mm-hmm. later on at Danville. Uh-huh. But we got on the bus in Murray and went to uh, Morgan Field to play Union mm-hmm. County. And I thought we would never get there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. my first first time to go through the countryside right. of uh, West Kentucky. Yeah, and uh, man, uh, I'll never forget it. Just cornfield after cornfield. Man, this is a lot. I hope they're all not this far away. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, fond memories of that. So uh, we're going to take a quick break and scroll our sponsors. We'll be right back and talk about the Lakers' offense and defense. back and we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of this ball game this week uh, as we said number 10 of the season uh, last regular season game for playoffs uh, and uh, you know we've we've lost three straight uh, to Callaway we they beat us in 06 07 and 08 last time we played was in 08 so it's been a while but we did scrimmage them uh, since then we, we we've seen them mm-hmm. but uh, their offense uh, quarterback's not bad uh, he's thrown for almost 1300 yards uh, white robbins and uh, he's got 14 touchdown passes, but he's got 10 interceptions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's a good player. He's young, only a sophomore, oh. and um, a good-looking kid, can throw the ball everywhere. You know, with a young quarterback starting, sometimes you deal with interceptions. As, you know, you're just learning, you know, the reads and what throws you can make and what throws you can't. But overall, I think he's a really talented player and getting better each week in the games that I saw him play. And they, they could give us some trouble. He got a nice kid that he throws it to, number 23. I'm sure that you have him in your mm-hmm. stats, and I'm not sure exactly his name but he's a really Bryce Aycock. and he is he is a stud of a football player really really good um, one of the better players that we'll see on, on any football team uh, individually um, that we've seen this year he, he's way up there uh, really really good especially on the offense side of the ball I'm pretty good defensively as well it really mm-hmm. stands out at receiver and somebody that's gonna you know we'll have our hands full of stopping that guy yeah, he's a, he's got over six hundred yards receiving, uh-huh. uh, 30, 35 catches, and I think seven seven uh, touchdowns. So yeah. uh, 
Yeah, nice player, and uh, and they've got some guys that, that run the ball okay too. They they can do some different people. Yeah, they do. They run games is pretty good. It's just not necessarily one back. And throughout the year, it looks like they've used a lot of different guys. There's 15, 31, too. Yeah. Just some numbers. A lot of different guys. You know, have got touches back there. Um, some uh, some of them are young too. I know 15 is a sophomore and plays inside backer for him too. I really liked him. He's a good player. Um, you know, and those other guys do a good job when they're in there as well. So the run game's pretty good. It's just kind of like us. Like, we're not one guy yard is a lot. It's just yeah. they got a lot of, you know, a co- host of backs that they run through. So. Yeah, we've used a lot of guys. And, uh, of course, we don't run the ball a whole, just a really whole lot don't either. Run it that and uh, I think they throw it around a lot more too. Yeah. This, uh, you know, this uh, – Aikok, Aikok boy, he's a he's a senior, and like you mm-hmm. said, you know he's it's going to be his last, last game, time. so uh, he's going to be all out. Yes, sir. Uh, be be a integral part of the game there to uh, get him stopped, and we've got uh, of course we've got a pretty good secondary. We've done a good job on some pretty good receivers this year. Yeah, I mean I think we've been really tested in the secondary, um, especially late when we started with Okat and Murray mm-hmm. and Mayfield, and um, yeah, we've had some success there. I I, I like our secondary. Um, I feel like honestly the defense has really came along in the last few weeks. Um, yeah. I've, I've felt pretty good about it. Um, Mayfield, obviously, we didn't necessarily play as well as we wanted to, but outside of that game, I thought we've really, you know, been playing well from, from up front, uh, mid level, and in the back end. So, feel good about what we've been doing. Just hope to, you know, we we progress and and you know, able to take care of business this week. Yeah, describe what kind of offense we'll see out of Callaway County. They're a spread offense. Um, I I think their offense coordinator is really good, um, does some really good stuff, a lot of motions, um, a lot of RPOs, so run pass options, whether he can make a decision, whether he wants to hand it off or throw it, and um, can really uh, put you in conflict. You know, guys don't know whether to play the run or play the pass, and I think their offense coordinator, like I said, really puts you in some binds and some things that he does. So, um, we got to really make sure that we're executing our job, and it's kind of like a new age option offense not mm-hmm. necessarily that one but that's the rpl that's the new thing it's like whatever you do the defense is going to be wrong you know so you got to make sure that you're playing your responsibility um in any offense like that so that's that's going to be the name of the game this week for us and we've pulled that one out of the hat a few times this yeah year we were right as well. yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it's worked very well at times yeah yeah we kind of pick and choose when it's good to do it for us at murray it was a really good week that we kind of had that run pass off where we could hand it or throw it so yeah we use it as well it's kind of a cheat code for the offense honestly yeah. it's a tough play to stop so you need to try to utilize it as much as you can honestly yeah. but uh, we've not used it a great deal hey, we no. just got to pull it out from well we do it sometimes and sometimes it's just a coordinates you may not even recognize it with the naked eye that there's a pass tag to it like on a lot of our run plays there may be a pass tag to it you just don't know you know so it's just just a cord we do run quite a few or so yeah and and i think we talked about this uh, a few shows back too was uh and michael will will ride it up there in their belly for a while too and and, and get that good read wait till the last second right yeah he does a good job executing it yeah, I, the old teams with well, Oklahoma used to run the, the yeah. triple option right. back in the day. Yeah. It was a pretty dangerous offense. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was it was uh, with it had some liabilities with it too because you put the put ball, ball to the ground, ground. Yeah. a lot. Yeah, and hard to come back. You know, yeah. to get down. And yeah, so. yeah. You don't you don't see many teams like that. No, I'm glad we don't. It's you tough know, to stop. It's a nightmare. And, and Russellville used to run the belly option. Yeah, it, you know a lot. Mm-hmm. And you know Crittenden ran the veer. Yeah. Back when, oh, really? Back, okay. Yeah, when Steve Pardue was here, Crittenden ran the ran the veer okay. for uh, two, three or four years. Yeah. Kind of uh, lost not the arts. Sh- not sure. Not sure we had the personnel to run the veer. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I mean, you know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe not the best, but uh, so. Uh, Defensively, what are you going? To, what can we expect out of? We're going to see a four-two front. Um, they've ran some different coverages throughout the year, um, so I, I would assume they'd mix it up a little bit. But four-two, you know, pretty traditional defense. Um, probably the one that we normally see the most. We've seen several odd fronts this year, but um, four-two, pretty, you know, stay and play type defense. Kind of what you see is what you're going to get, and just do your assignment and get stopped. So did Caldwell run it? No, they're more of a three-four. Three, okay, yeah. well, so maybe I'll, maybe it's a college game I was watching. Some you don't see many five six man fronts any, anymore. Uh, Very hard. To I, do I saw it somewhere this past weekend. It must you be. may call call a five-two. They may even call themselves a five-two. I'm not sure, but they'll adjust that with those. Yeah, outside linebackers. They're more linebackers to me. 
So uh, just looking at some of Callaway's stats, number 15, Logan Smith, he's just sophomore. He leads team in tackles with 78. Yeah, 15 is a nice player, really good inside linebacker. Like I said, they got some really young, and I don't know how young they are, honestly. I don't necessarily usually look how – I've just kind of seen some of these kids and heard that yeah. that was a really good sophomore class for them, and I know the quarterback and him and a couple more. So that, they may be really young. I, I don't know that I think across the board. Just, yeah, yeah I, but – so that that may be some growing pains going on too, but I, I think they're a good football team, offensively and defensively. I really do, um, especially you know from what we see, they're a four A football team with a, a lot of talent, number of kids, size, speed, everything. So, you know, I expect for them to be a pretty good football team. That that can be a tough place to play at times. I, yeah. I mean, there's, there's back in the day, uh, Tillman had trouble sometimes. They were in the same district. Tillman had struggled sometimes. At, at, Callaway trying to trying to beat the Lakers when they had superior teams, but uh, Callaway, I assume they're on a two-year contract. We'll have them again next year. We will. We'll be here. Uh huh. Yeah. Will we, will we have the same schedule next year? Yeah. 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 Be exactly. Every, unless I mean, everybody's on contract. So yeah. <laughs> I made sure of that. This is actually my first schedule I've got to do from the end. We had holes that, that I've had to fill. You know for. With COVID, a lot of contracts didn't get signed, and things yeah. happened, and people were able to get out of games. And anyway, th- that's not the case now. Everyone has a contract, so it, we're either playing them or they're going to have to pay their fee for you know dropping. So and vice versa us as well. So. I've seen several games on KHS AA scoreboard this year that were forfeits, particularly like in uh, Kentucky teams playing Ohio teams. I don't know if something weird's going on. Really? Yeah, I don't uh, know about that. Yeah, it just seems like I've seen seen more. Yeah. Uh, this year. Hmm. Than, than, I'm not sure. Not, not more than during COVID. Right. But but just uh, – Well, eligibility issues? There's uh, been some elig- yeah, eligibility uh, issues going down the pipe here recently. Yeah. Which I'm not going to speak on who because I don't really know what the issues are. But I, I know there has been a those. few of those yeah. coming in that have uh, resulted in forfeits around the state. Yeah. Well, we, we were going to have uh, Caden Howard on uh, tonight and Cameron Belcher, uh, but they did choose to go over and be a faithful Rocket supporter. We don't blame them at all. No. But uh, I want to talk a little bit about those guys. Uh, Caden, we'll, we'll lead with him because, man, he had 11 catches last week for uh, almost 100 yards receiving. And he's he's just a guy, Gage. I mean, I know he's your nephew and you don't like to talk about him, but, man, just every week he just he, he, he impresses yeah, he's a good player, especially out wide at, at receiver. Um, you know, he, he's long and athletic. He can run routes. And, you know, one-on-one, he, he's a problem for most people, I, I will say that. And him and Micah have a really good connection. Micah was really throwing the ball on time and on target. A lot of underneath stuff, just on-time stuff, easy catches, and did a good job getting upfield last week and making plays. But he's a good football player, specifically at offense. Um, good on defense as well. Mm-hmm. And, and the good thing about him on defense is he can do a lot of things. He's a guy that can get in the box and tackle. He's a guy that can play coverage. He's a guy, if we need to stop somebody, I can put him on him. He can cover. You know, he's very versatile defensively. Um, which doesn't necessarily always show up in the stats, but he's definitely a good guy to have on the defensive yeah. side of the ball too. But offensively, is pr- what he primarily is, though, I think, is a receiver, and, and he does a good job. He does. Uh, you know, go back to some of Andy's statistics, and you can find them all on the Rocket uh, website, rocketsfootball.com. Uh, but last week, uh, he set the record for most receptions by a sophomore in a season and he now has 45 receptions uh this year and we just mentioned callaway's best guys got like 35 mm-hmm. and k has got 45 uh you know the previous record holder was chad perriman yeah chad perriman uh father of davis perriman mm-hmm. who's uh on the on, he, he's playing football yeah yeah yeah, yeah he's, he's been doing well just a freshman but, but been really yeah. doing well uh, and uh, hey, uh, Caden is also approaching the record for receiving yards, uh, 624, and receiving TDs, nine uh, is the record by a sophomore. He has uh, 500 yards receiving and eight receiving touchdowns. So one more touchdown. Let's get him. Let's get him there this week. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice. To get a few, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, Cameron too. And he, you know, he's a guy. And we've, we've mentioned this several times. It's hard to get everybody the touches they need. But, man, he's explo- he makes things happen when he yeah. gets the ball. Yeah, he's so slippery. Uh, he's probably the smoothest, like, jitteriest guy that we have. You give him a ball in space, he's small, but he's hard to take down. He's hard to get a hold of. Great hands, uh, super, super talent, just super talented. Uh, run routes, catch the football. Crazy catches, just great athlete overall, and does some really good thing defensively as well. Can play safety, can play corner, 
um, just a really, really good football player. And like you said, a lot of those guys that kind of get in the shadows or whatever, it's just not their nights or it's just tough to get them all the football. But Cameron's a very capable athlete, um, basically anywhere you put them on offense and very good in the secondary on defense. And had a good year, and I think he's kind of starting to – you know, we've had some injuries, especially last week, mm-hmm. I think, that kind of got him into the mix. Mm-hmm. You've seen him get some more touches and kind of see what he can do a little bit. Really stepped in there and uh, basically fills Tyler's role when Tyler goes out offensively and defensively. We'll get in there and get a pick right away. And it, it's certainly nice to have a guy that can come in there and you feel good about, which he gets about 50% of the defense reps all the time and rotates yeah. in on offense. But, you know, when you're only playing half the snaps, it's just tough for everybody to get touches. There's just a mm-hmm. lot of them. But he does a good job when he's in there. And you mentioned Tyler, Tyler Bell. We, we went out of the game early last week thought he had a, a, a broken collarbone originally yeah. but turns out it's not had some separation and I, yeah is, is he going to try to go this week or? uh he i would i would like questionable, it's questionable yeah. right now yeah we're trying to kind of see where we're at we're tender with him gatton um tyree um it kind of hit us all at once he jinked us a little bit <laughs> Talk said about how healthy we were the week before yeah. but no uh we all, we're still lucky, though, I think, with all of them. Nothing serious. We just, um, we're just we just tender, shoulders bothering us a little bit, some neck things going on. Yeah. But just bumps and bruises. And, you know, this time of year, I mean, it, it's tough. You know, it's everybody's – a lot of people's hurt. There's a lot of people that aren't saying a lot. Blazina's ankle was extremely swelled up after the football game, fought through it, extremely proud of him. He was – able to practice today which was huge and his ankles black and blue and swell but he's out there pushing through it and giving it everything he's got and, and the others were as well everyone's practiced and um, we had to keep some guys out of contact obviously and some to limited contact but everyone's out there trying to practice right now and you know we'll just see how everyone feels you know probably all the way up till friday and mm-hmm. see w- what we can do we have plans in place obviously if they can't play but they can play we'd love to have them especially the seniors you know no matter how this goes they ain't got many left so i certainly don't want to take any from them but the playoffs are coming as well so you got to think about that too i mean this is not a playoff game we want them but you kind of get your second win now though with the you know staring at the playoffs here as a player you know it's it's been a long season yeah it's a new season after this week a new one yeah 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 i agree I want to mention a little bit about Micah Newcomb too of course you you know we talk about him all the time but hey mr efficiency and in fact he's a I think Andy has it on on the uh, Andy Hunt, our statistics, our guy that compiles all our stats, the statistician. Uh, it says he's got something posted on the website. It says that Micah can literally go 0 for 64 passing and still have the highest career completion uh, uh, completion percentage for uh, uh, his career, and uh, he's now the fifteenth uh, fifteenth uh, uh, player that has 15 or 100 more yards of total offense. And number two, there's only two quarterbacks in history that's had 300 career completions. He's one of them. I'll, you know who the other one is, I guess. What would you say? I said, career completions, 100 burn. 100 burn, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's so, going to my first answer on it. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's like Dan Marino. <laughs> yeah. Or, or uh, I guess it's uh, uh, Tom, Brady. Tom Brady now. Yeah, in the old days, play trivia, everything. He's Dan yeah. Marino, passing stats, <laughs> Dan Marino. Uh, but uh, Micah, you know, probably the, one of the most looked at statistics is uh, career passing yards, and he's number three right now, and uh, he's 130 away from uh, from reaching 4,000 yards. And if he does that, uh, he will be the only second quarterback in Rocket history to be over 4,000. And mm-hmm. again, that's alongside Hunter. But Hunter Boone's got 6,763 yeah. yards, and he's on the sideline for you too. And he's yeah. got a good pair of eyes and helps you out a lot, doesn't he? Helps coach the middle school. Yeah, it's, we're glad to have him. That's for sure. Yeah. So uh, uh, we'll kind of uh, we'll walk it off here, uh, Coach Courtney. We've got. Uh, Got Callaway County uh, here to to close out the season, and then we're going to go get ready for the playoffs. Todd Central rolls in here uh, first round. I know you don't like to look past any games, Mm -hmm. but do you know anything at all about Todd? I've seen Todd throughout the year um, just on films of opponents and things like that. Um, But but that's it. Don't know a whole lot about them. Um, Know a little bit about their coach. We see them in seven-on-seven in the summer. They've always got athletes. Yeah, they'll certainly have athletes, and sometimes they're huge. I don't know if they are right now. I don't know. If you remember the last time we played them, it, they, they were absolutely huge. It was Tyler Boone and them were here. Maybe even Hunter still, but it was here, and they were big up front. So, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know much about them. Like you said, we just need to 
make sure we focus on this one right now and go into the playoffs strong. We'd really like to have a clean football game, really cut down the penalties. Turnovers have been much better. We ended up – we did get one on special teams, which I guess don't count as a turnover. But to me it is. Um, we should have had the ball and we gave it to the opposition. So, to me it is. But – then if we can clean up the penalties, you know, the, just that's the focus this week. Can we just play clean for one week going into the playoffs and try yeah. to get on a run? I think our efficiency has been better. I think that our turnover, taking care of the football has been better. Now if we can take care of the penalties, I, I feel like it will really make a difference in the football team. So that's really been what we've been harping on this week. Can we just play clean and efficient and put it all together going into the playoffs? So that's the focus right now. Can we get bigger mouthpieces and, and maybe tape, tape them off? Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, we average about a personal foul or unsportsmanlike. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going you on. You get a big mouth. They never say nothing, though. No, that's what. They, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't like, say. Never <laughs> said nothing. I swear. <laughs> Other guy always yeah, says. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, uh, going into this game, uh, I'll have to ask you: Do we have uh, an idea of what how people are going to pay at the gate? That's one of the biggest questions during the week. Yeah, is, it'll be just like at home. So it's on GoFan, yeah. and they'll have a card reader, no cash. So. Yep, exactly like the gate. Uh, it is their senior night, so they'll have senior night facilities before the game. Um, I know we got to be able to fill at 620, so, but I don't think anything different as far as time of game or anything like that. So, yeah, yep. 7, 7 p.m. Go kickoff. fan, yeah. card reader. I'll be yeah. glad when they standardize and everybody has uh, one way of uh, uh, taking admission. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just kind of confusing, and it, it confuses <laughs> our fans. All right, and, yeah. So, Anyway, all right, well, we hate we missed the boys this week. We'll try to get some of the guys on uh, next week as we look at the playoffs. Thank you, Coach Courtney. We'll see you down at Callaway County on Friday night, 7 p.m. kickoff. Last regular season game.